Hello everyone, Anastarita here. Today, we will go over the three major social media platforms. And we're gonna talk about what are the differences, what they are similar on, and what are the unique features that each one has that would make you wanna choose one or the other. So let's get started. First, I wanna start talking about MetaSpark, which we already know. And as you noticed earlier, I had all my like landing pages open. They look very similar just starting here. It's just like a sea of gray and they have a very similar like organization system. They'll have like the templates and they'll have like some information on the left side uh, and they have access to the communities and uh, knowledge bases. So that's like a very similar thing they have. But let's see each one by one what makes them special. So in the case of MetaSpark Studio, uh, this probably has the cleanest and easiest to understand landing page. Uh, in general, it has a very limited amount of templates, but this is good. It makes it very easy to know where to start. These templates are indeed templates, so they are made to be replaceable. They are meant to just show you where things are supposed to go to go. And that's one of the reasons why I always recommend MetaSpark as a starting point. If you plan to learn all the three platforms anyway, it is the easiest one to sink your teeth in. And again, you can just see it immediately on the landing page. Everything is very clearly explained. So this is the face decoration effect. So you have glasses, you could change it or swap it for your own 3D model. You have the world object and it just has a placeholder world object that you could just replace by your own world object. And so that makes it a great platform to start, you know, like one of the most easy to access. Uh, on the other hand, we have Effect House. And Effect House is the platform you use to create effects for TikTok. And very similar to MetaSpark, just like on the left side, it has your recent projects. It has some information about the communities and the knowledge base. Uh, but what is interesting is that it also has these other templates in here. And you can notice already the templates are more varied. They're already more than what you have in the initial a landing page of MetaSpark, and you have like announcements in this side. Another thing that uh, Effect House has, they have a lot of like challenges and hackathons and events that are actually visible on this landing page. And so, as you can see, the effects are a little bit more specific, less than less less than templates. You know what I mean? They look less like things you just go and replace, but more they're telling you, hey, this is what you could do with this. However, the projects are organized in a way that makes them very easy to replace, you know? So uh, similar to what happens on MetaSpark, where you have something that says drag here, you have this like very uh, active interface. On Effect House, you have an interface that even though it doesn't have like these like pop-up information, it has things like, let me get this on this right screen. You have things like this, like you have a specific folders that tells you what to do, like body outline, or here you can try them and you can turn it on and turn it off. So that's uh, a general uh, difference. And then you have Lens Studio. And Lens Studio is probably among the three, the most complex landing page, very similar to your left side. You have things like your recent projects and you have your communities and your knowledge base. But uh, what you have that is very special is that you have a massive amount of templates. And in this case, the templates feel more like they are a survey of what you can do, like showcase of what you can do with the tool more than templates per se. They are very complex and some are very specific, but you can really get an idea of how far you can push this software just by seeing the templates. Another thing that I really like is that they have the templates separated by beginner, intermediate, and advanced. And that is like great when you are learning the software to know where to pick and what makes sense. And if you hover in a template, for example, you see, you see learn more, it shows you the complexity of the template. So that makes it very easy if you are learning to know uh, where to go or like where to start. So the other thing I want to talk now is once you open your projects, what, what you see on your interface, and they're pretty much the same. You have, in the case of MetaSpark, as we've seen before, you have the lay the scene or like the components are on your scene at the top left, and then you have the assets, then you have the patch editor. And on the right, you have the properties and here you have the preview. 
And here in the middle, you have your scene and like allows you to get a general idea where things are. This is very similar to what you get on a TikTok effect house. You have, again, on your left, you have what they call the hierarchy, which is the things that are on your scene. You have your assets. And you can also, just like in Metaspark, you can browse an asset library that they have connected and you can like download things, download materials and like different things that you can use. And here you have your preview and just like you have your properties here, you have your inspector panel that shows you the properties. Um, then when you go to Lens Studio, it is very, very similar. And you start seeing the similarities. Then you have your objects, which is the your scene, then you have your assets that appear as resources. Your asset library is up here. Just like in any other software we've seen, you can use this asset library to access uh, different assets. But what is interesting is that instead of having the patch editor or the graph editor, editor down here, what you have is that you have a logger, which allows you to know how things are working or not. And then your graphs and your materials show up in these other tabs. So instead of showing down here, you have them in here, and then you can edit things in real time in here. The same thing, just in a different location. And there's very small differences between these that we will be talking about, but they are very similar. So a great thing is that if you learn MetaSpark, it's very easy to then learn Effect House or, or learn uh, Lens Studio. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is visual scripting. So all three platforms, as you notice by now, use visual scripting. Uh, Lens Studio, Metaspark, and TikTok Effect House, uh, they all use visual scripting. The biggest difference is that both Metaspark and Lens Studio do use JavaScript as well. So that can be very useful if you are very familiar with the language. It allows you to create more complex interactions that you would only if you would able to, if the only interaction you have is actually the visual scripting. Um, Metaspark has the patch editor that, as we've seen before, uh, is a node-based system and allows you to create self-contained patches to organize things. And this is one single patch editor. So what you can do is that you can uh, collect things and create patches, uh, as we saw last time, and you can edit those, but everything exists on this same area of the patch editor. This is very similar to what you have on um, uh, TikTok Effect House. You have a main graph, but uh, and you can have subgraphs. But what is so interesting about this is that you can also create variables. And if you are familiar with Unreal Engine blueprints, this is going to be very familiar to you. The power of variables is that it allows you to get and set them in any time of the process. So it allows you to create effects in which you can use iteration or uh, looping processes to make things happen. So in the case of Metaspark, we have to use the feedback that, that allowed us to create this sense of like looping. In this case of Effect House, you can actually just get and set variables similar to what you would do in a real engine. The last one is Effect House, sorry, uh, Lens Studio, and it has a very similar, this is right now the material editor that looks actually very similar if you create something like a, a scrape graph. Uh, and it's very, very similar, the exact same thing, similar to Unreal and similar to Effect House, you have an start event and you have a click event or an update event uh, that is very similar to what you see in Unreal. But what is very unique about Lens Studio is that there's no one centralized uh, patch or one centralized visual editing tool. What that means is that everything you want to create, you create on separate scripts that then you call on your scene. This is really good when you have very big uh, complex projects because it allows you to compartmentalize and troubleshoot becomes troubleshooting becomes way more manageable when for example I have an effect where I have like hand tracking and I have segmentation and I have an interaction because everything is separated in its own different script it allows me to troubleshoot way easier than if I have everything in a single uh visual graph the last thing I want to talk to you about is about the capabilities 
of each platform in a specific. Among the three ones we're looking today, MetaSpark is probably the simplest one. It has the segmentations we've seen before. It has word tracking, hand tracking, face uh, gesture detection, but the slow integration of new machine learning models makes it the most stripped down of the three. Uh, for example, what Lens Studio and TikTok Effect House have had uh, sky segmentation for a while now, nothing like that exists on MetaSpark yet. Um, and another thing to notice is that the limit on the effects is only four megabytes per project. So that can be a little bit uh, hard to work within those limitations. But yet again, it's a platform that is so easy to sink your teeth on that I always recommend it as a starting point. The next one is TikTok Effect House. And it has very similar features to what MetaSpark has. It has very some extra types of segmentation, like pet segmentation or sky segmentation, as I mentioned before. But what is so cool too, is that it has a specific type of machine learning models that you can use. They are under the section of generative effects or art maker. So if you come here into the hierarchy and you were to add an object here in generative effects, you can pick them. Most of the machine learning projects or models uh, are limited to style transfer and face gesture uh, manipulation, meaning they can make you, you know what I mean? Like when you are smiling, make you look sad and stuff like that. That's called face expression synthesis. So that's usually the type of machine learning models that you can find on TikTok Effect House that even though they are very limited, they are so easy to use. Like in this case, for example, I'm trying the R Maker template. If I come here and edit, I can say generate artwork. And as simple as that, it brings me here there's a description that it gives me as a as a like a primer. I can keep it. I'm gonna keep this one for now, and I can say, hey, I'm gonna upload my image to test it, and I'm just gonna upload this image that I found on Onplash of a person just to be able to see what is the reach. And when I have my image, I can say, hey, generate an image, and quickly as that, it's gonna here it is it's gonna start generating a new style transfer model that I can apply to my effect. So it is limited, but it's so easy that it's amazing. So I say, hey, I like this, confirm. It starts immediately applying it. And this creates just like that, a style transfer effect. So that's one of the really great things that he has, even though the model is very simple, uh, it is very easy to access. The last one and most complex of the three is Lens Studio. And think of Lens Studio almost like a game engine that specializes in AR. One of the things that make it so special is the fact that you can integrate external APIs into your lenses, meaning you can create a level of complexity and interaction that wouldn't otherwise fit within the size limit of the lenses. So for example, you have the Translate API, which allows to translate text in real time. But one of the things that makes it very unique is the integration of machine learning models. So early on, Lens Studio started integrating machine learning into their systems, and they have a very complex array of models that you can access, from class classification, to text detection, to word to text, to object detection, custom segmentations. It is an insane amount of models that you can use. So imagine you're working with a client and they want you to make a lens that only activates where you are looking at their specific product. That's possible with Lens Studio. And they have a very uh, well-fed uh, knowledge base that teaches you how to create a machine learning model from zero to finish, uh, just following the steps and the tools they have. What is so crazy about this is like creating a machine learning model is very complex for sure. There's a lot of work that goes into it, but it's possible to create a custom machine learning model for your effect uh, using Lens Studio. The limit on Lens Studio for effects is eight megabytes and 10 megabytes, an extra 10 megabytes if you're using a Snap ML component for your machine learning model. And you can also do remote ac assets that is streamed from the cloud. And these assets have a limit of 25 megabytes. So at the end of the day, you have like a lot of latitude of what you can do in Lens Studio. Uh, forgot to mention on Effect House, the limit of your project is five megabytes, which is a little bit more than MetaSpark. 
uh, which is at this scale means a lot. <laughs> uh, but it's still they are still all very small on what you can put in terms of assets. Yet the ability of doing things remotely in the studio, it's very, uh, very good and very powerful. So those are basically the three platforms we have on social AR right now. Th there are the differences. Each platform has its advantages, not only because they have different capabilities of what you can develop with them, but the different audiences they reach and the way they can make uh, your event or your effect stand out. And this is, I hope this was helpful for you. It gives you some clarity of what are the differences of the platform. If you want to learn anything else new about this platform or this, anything else that you want to see about the things we went over today, please comment it below in the comments and we'll be happy to explore more about that. So thank you so much and see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you're serious about taking your touch designer and interactive skills to the next level, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can learn more by checking out the link in the description. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and the little bell icon for more awesome free content.